Alright, releasing now. And look at your missile. Just look at it. Wee! <laughs> it just lofts up. Oh! We can uh, start by putting on the, some uh, weapons or the harms on our jet. Hey guys, it's Mambo. In today's video, I took my friend and channel follower Aramis on a one on one training session to teach him how to use the Harm anti SAM missile along with the Harm targeting system on the F 16 in DCS world. I'm happy to invite any new DCS players looking for help to follow the channel and join my Discord community, link down in the description. If you join, we can schedule our own flights together and I always love helping and teaching and not just in the F-16. Along with the rest of the kind people in my community, we hope to get new players comfortable in DCS so we can all fly together one day. I hope you enjoy the video and if you do, make sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell. This will be the first part of a two-part training session I had with Aramis. Now back to the video. You're good with the startup, right? I think so. The only thing I'm a little unsure of is the um, ECM. I don't know if we need that. Uh no, we're uh, it, it is uh, it can be very useful for seed, but uh, we're not going to touch on that. That's a whole other topic. Okay. <laughs> I've got the RWR up, so that's good to go. Yeah, it's not going to do much. I mean, it is going to give us kind of like general bearing uh, towards those SAMs, but it's not going to be anything precise. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, don't don't forget to turn on the left and right hard points, or the HDS and lightning pod. Yeah, I got those on. Uh, also, do you know the new feature of the PDLT, or the primary Negative. primary data link uh, track? So, no. uh, go to your HSD mm -hmm. and zoom in zoom in as much as you can. So it should be uh, 15, and um, and also soy the HSD. Yeah. And move the. You should see a number two, which is me. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's kind of. We're so close together that it kind of blends both of us together. But you yeah. should see a number two there, right next to you. We're on the on the right hand MFT, right? Uh, it should be on the right one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So if you see the two, you put the and soy the HSD. You can move that cursor. Yeah. With uh, so then put the cursor on me. Mm -hmm. And press TMS up, okay. and now I should be in kind of a octagon or something like that. Uh, and if you look outside the cockpit with your helmet, you should have that uh, same octagon on me, and that's how you can keep better track of uh, of me. Oh yeah, cool. So when we that's fly around, yep, when we fly around, that's uh, it's always gonna guide you towards me. I also have it set on you, so it's gonna be easier for me to follow you. Yep, got it. Wow, yep. it's also that, that is. That is a cool feature. <laughs> and uh, let's just for a second go into air to ground. Yes. And the right HS, uh, the right uh, MFD should have changed to uh, SMS page. Just make sure you press on the power on to turn on the AGM-88. Yep, it's power. Uh, yeah, they don't need any cooldown or uh, warm up time. So uh, you can do that at any time, but I just want it, uh, this flight to be straightforward and uh, no need for, to fumble around for uh, buttons while we're flying. Uh, we can get out of air to ground and I'm good to go. So uh, we can uh, taxi out first, I'll follow you. Okay. I was just going to say that the harms certainly look lethal. <laughs> I like them. They're chunky. Oh yeah, they're uh, big and heavy and you're going to definitely feel that when you launch them. That you definitely tilt on the heavier side. Um, going to have to trim, that, trim it out. Yeah, it's a, it's not a 2,000 pound bomb, but it, it is... Uh, it is heavy. <laughs> right, so uh, when you're ready, and uh, spool up and I'll follow you. Alright, I'm rolling. Yep. Let's uh, burn until uh, 350 and then uh, let's drop the power. Okay. Off the ground, wheels up. Wheels up. Let's uh, start setting up um, because we're gonna be there sooner than uh, we realize. <laughs> okay. So, uh, air to ground mode, and let's already fence in. So, uh, master arm switch to arm. Armed. And let's set up the MFDs. So, uh, left one, you can put the HAD or harm attack display. Should be uh, when you're in the page select 
page, uh, it should be top left. Oh yeah, there is. Uh, there, yep, and yep, that's got it. that's using your that's the page you get when you have the HDS on. So when you don't have the HDS on, this uh, page isn't uh, available. And next on the right, uh, MFD, you can switch the TGP with the WPN or weapon page. It's uh, middle left. Got it. These are the two pages uh, you're gonna use with the harm. The weapon page is the actual thing that the harm, like it's the actual page of the harm itself. And again, the had is the uh, page of the HDS, All right? Let's switch next to waypoint. What it will allow us and you will see it is, it will allow us to launch harms from incredibly long ranges without a waypoint on the, on the SAM. Okay. In the Hornet, for example, if you want to do these kind of shots, you need a waypoint on the SAM. That's not always realistic. Yeah, you uh, might not. Uh, yeah. But like, what what's the general range of a hard missile? Um, it depends on the mode, uh, and also your altitude and speed. But generally, it's gonna be about 40, 50 nautical miles. So I got a, a SA six, I think it was on the RWR, but. Yeah, uh, like that, that, that that's something I still need to learn is the ranges of all the weapons and, and stuff because I'm pretty sure <laughs> you're going to be within range when you release the harm, right? It really depends on the SAM and its radar. So a medium range SAM, or sorry, a long range SAM it has many times has the same or even more range than the harm, and the, that's why they're so they're so dangerous in many times. Uh, in some other situations, and I've noticed it with the SA6, sometimes you can launch when you're at twice the range of the SA6. Um, oh. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, I've also seen times that uh, I've noticed it actually with uh, shorter range SAMs that the range is so short that. Um, the harm struggles with finding their radar because it's such a short-range radar, and by the time it finds it, you're very close to the to the range of the SAM. Uh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. so uh, the first thing we'll do is lock onto that SAM, and it's right in front of us, as you can see from the RWR. So I need to increase the range to 120 on the HAD. Also, make sure you soy the HAD. The HAD, sorry, not the HAD. I'm at 120. Yep, and do you have the, the harm attack display soid? Yes. Yeah, so you can see that right in front of us, at the waypoint, there's a 6. It kind of hides behind the waypoint. Yeah. Let's uh, lock it up, so just put the cursor on it and TMS up. Got it, it turned red. Turned red, and on your HUD you have it as uh, SPI. Uh, yes. So, uh, pause for a second so we can uh, take a look. If you look at the right display or the, the weapon display, you can mm -hmm. see that um, there's a green line and below it there should be a six and a three, right? Correct. So the six is boxed, that's the uh, sound we're launching at. The HDS automatically uh, tells the home which sound to look for. So you need, uh, generally you need to assign what SAM the uh, harm is looking for, but the HDS does it automatic automatically. You don't need to choose. You just lock on to uh, what you see in the, with the HDS, and it will do uh, the rest for you. Cool. So press that EOM button. Oh, it was one press, and you should be in RUK, range, range unknown. Yep, got it. I have no idea why it's called range unknown, because uh, we do know the range. Uh, well, the, yeah, the radars, or the, the missile... I don't actually, no, is it the weapon that's detecting that SA6, or is it our onboard radar? Uh, no, it's the HDS. Okay. So uh, the 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 thing we put on the left uh, chick um, yeah. is what's uh, capturing that or locking onto that radar, and that's what that's what is giving tasking to that uh, harm and telling it you're going for SA6 and uh, such. Uh, the position mode of the S16, as I explained, there's two main modes and then each has sub modes. The position mode or POS, as you can see on the right display, is using a SPI to, uh, it basically tells the harm. There's a SAM on that SPI, fly there, and when you can, lock onto it and hit it. So a SPI can be generated, as you know, from a waypoint, from your helmet, from uh, the targeting pod and from the HDS and many many more also your uh, earth radar all of those systems can give you a SPI 
Uh, right now, the HDS is giving the speed. So, what the harm is going to do is fly to that uh, coordinate. And as it gets close, it will turn on its um, its own seeker. Find that as a seek that six that you tasked it to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, lock onto it, fly into it, and destroy the radar. Um, the reason we destroy the radar and not the launcher is because it's way more efficient. The launchers cannot shoot without the radar. So... Uh, it's a lot more efficient to shoot one missile and take out the radar than uh, shoot six missiles and take out all the six launchers. Yep, makes um, sense indeed. Yeah, um, what a lot of missions do actually is go for the radar, destroy it with harm, and then either another sortie or the same sortie can go in and uh, drop some uh, JDAMs or laser guide bombs and such. Uh, uh, sorry, I had one question. So the rectangle at the bottom of the HUD, what is that exactly? Yeah, that's basically uh, gonna f start flashing once we're in range, uh, uh, okay. and basically oh. tell, you, tell you you're free to shoot. There it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, so for me it's uh, almost there. Yeah, okay, so uh, just before we launch, uh, you can see on the right side of the HUD, it should be familiar from other weapons, you have that bracket with an uh, uh, arrow pointing into it. That's the range. So uh, it starts from 80, uh, but it, as I said, it's quite rare to launch uh, harm at 80, especially in range unknown. It's basically impossible. So it starts from there, but you can see the bracket is way below. And the uh, arrow, when it enters that bracket, it means you're in range and you're free to shoot. The uh, uh, rectangle is going to start flashing uh, and such. Also, on the left display, so the harm, harm attack display, you can see that kind of uh, bubble generating in front of your um, aircraft, like starting from your aircraft. Mm -hmm. That is basically the range. So you can see it goes like it's in front of you and also to the side. So you don't have to point exactly at the, uh, at the center. And we're going to look at it uh, in in the next stand we go for. But uh, for now, let's, uh, as most weapons do, just uh, fly into it. And you said your rectangle is already flashing. Mine is actually, actually isn't, but it will in a minute because I'm ever so slightly behind you. Okay, so once we unpause, uh, if you're in range, rectangle is flashing, arrow is in the bracket, and Sam is in the bubble. Press and hold weapon release, and you'll see the harm come off the... I'm off your jet. Alright, just wait a little bit longer to get it fully in the bubble. It doesn't have to be fully, as long as uh, the other indications tell you that it's in, it's in. Alright, weapon away. Hell yeah. There we go. Now, yeah, range trimming. unknown... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, range unknown flies directly onto the... like, tells the harm to fly directly onto the SAM. That's why it has a shorter range than what you're gonna see with the uh, EOM and uh, NPB. Okay, and can I see like a... there's usually a timer isn't there just for okay. when the... Yeah, I can't... Uh, I don't have it on my display and I'm gonna save my harms for the next ones, but above the green line now there should be... Uh, there should be uh, a 6 and a timer, right? Um, actually I see three and the six are above the green line and on the right side of that screen there's now a 10 boxed with a three under it okay so um yeah probably range unknown okay my mistake uh range unknown probably doesn't have uh a timer but the other ones will so we'll see that in a minute okay. uh you don't have a timer what you can do is uh cheat and use the uh f10 map uh f10 map or the f6 view of the weapon let's yeah, see follow <laughs> yeah. following my sexy weapon uh you can see that it got quite slow it's uh below the speed of sound in the other modes you're gonna see that it approaches at above the speed of sound and it it's crazy the other modes range unknown is just uh, it gets the it's, harm there yeah it's pretty shallow actually yeah you'll but you'll see in a moment uh the other modes there you go you got it though oh actually i didn't, didn't i don't think <laughs> yeah you didn't no. dam i think you only damaged it and didn't kill it oh it actually it's slightly missed, as I said, harms. Launch my own just to hit it, but it's. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So, right. uh, no need to switch a waypoint. Uh, all we're gonna do is you can see there's a six uh, west of. Uh, oh, sorry, not west, north from us, so to our left. Yep. And let's lock it up with the HDS and just aim towards it. We should already be in range, uh, but don't launch. Let me right. know when you're ready to. I've locked it up and I'm. To any left. Okay. Uh, let's switch to EOM. So two presses on that mode switch on the right display. Got it. 
cool. Um, so don't point at it, actually. Let it be at the side of your bubble. I want you to uh, really see uh, yep, what um, EOM is, is all about. It's already flashing the box. So. Yeah, so EOM has quite a bit more range. Uh, than range unknown, not as much as uh, uh, not as much as PB, which we're going to look at next, but it has a it does have quite a nice range. So if it's uh, it should be on the side of your bubble and in range. Uh, let me get slightly closer to you. Again, uh, fairly close to you. Once you're ready, you can uh, if your all your parameters are good to go, you can press and hold that weapon release. All right, releasing now. And look at your missile. Just look at it. We. <laughs> It just lofts up. Oh. So that's what gives the range unknown uh, an, a really impressive range. Now, above the green line, you should have that uh, ti uh, timer. Yep, one minute, exactly. Yep, and if you uh, go into the F6 view and follow your missile, you can see that it's at 1,600 knots. It's going crazy fast. and It's at 32,000 feet, uh, which is slightly low for what it usually does because we're at 20,000. Uh, but if we were at 30,000 and we're uh, launching at the max range of it, it can go up to 60, 70,000 feet. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. And it, it's diving down and it's still about the speed of sound. Yeah, I do like watching the weapons come down. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun <laughs> by itself. <laughs> It is still much faster than it was with the range unknown. I'm actually and gonna hit it. And yeah, so even though it slightly misses, uh, it it was close enough to. Let's see what happened to that uh, radar. It's completely destroyed. So that uh, Sam is out. Awesome. Let me unlock that radar and also a few. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but a little bit after you uh, destroy it, that radar should uh, disappear from the RWR. It already did right now. About three three hundred ninety knots at the moment. Yeah, you're a bit fast, but that's good. Uh, usually, when doing CD, speed is uh, speed and altitude is king, both for uh, fuel saving savings reason and uh and also because you if you get shot at you want to dive and you need speed and such you'll see it uh once we go against actually uh actual active sams right now we're just uh, practicing yeah that'll be exciting <laughs> it will when the R rwr starts screaming at, at you and beeping the entire time it's uh can become quite hectic but in a good way there should be a six uh ever so slightly to the right and it's on the navigation line or around the navigation line or the navigation route. Do you see it? Yep. Right, lock it up and let's switch to PB. So two, again, two presses on the mode switch on the right. Uh, okay, got it. And now with PB, you do have to point at the SAM. So just oh yeah, the, uh, looks like the, the search area is much narrower. Is it's that much what? narrower, but it's much longer. It has like, we're a little bit low for a home shot. Again, for when practicing, it doesn't matter as much. But usually, you want to be at uh, at least twenty-five thousand. Uh, but if you do that twenty-five, thirty thousand feet, or you can even do thirty-five, if you really feel like it. Um, and you fly at uh, close to Mach one, you can really get a lot of range from this PB mode. So, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so what, as you saw with the EOM, the missile just went up in the air and lofted up to increase its range, um, mm -hmm. and also go into, uh, into thinner air. So it, uh, doesn't have, it doesn't lose as much speed and, and all, all the advantages of flying high. So what PB does actually is instead of the missile lofting, you're going to loft for it. So right now you see the bracket on the right side of the HUD and... Yes. Um, but that's fine. So what it that tells you is the amount of it's the estimated amount of seconds until you're in range. So if you see 19 without an A behind it, yeah, it should mm -hmm. no, no way it's an A. Um, yeah. So if you see 19, it means it's estimating about 19 seconds until you're in range. For me, it's estimating five seconds um, until I will be in range. As soon as you're in range, it's going to change to A and the number. What A is, is, is angle. Why? Because it, it's telling you which uh, pitch angle you need to go for on your pitch ladder uh, to loft that harm. But 
So you don't want to pull too many Gs so you don't lose too much speed and can't keep your nose up. Uh, mm -hmm. But you also don't want to do it too slow and then the... Uh, because you're pitching up, you're also gonna lose speed. So uh, you pull until you get to that angle, whether it's it can be 20, it can be 30, it can be 40, uh, whatever the jet tells you. You're gonna pull until you get there, and you're gonna lose quite a bit of speed, so preferably just go upside down and, and just let your nose dive a bit to get that speed back. Uh, when you laugh, make sure you use the afterburner and, and all that, because you're gonna need all the power you can, because it's quite, uh, quite a climb. Okay. All right. Um, final that, thing. That, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. And it's going to happen very quickly, which is why I'm explaining mm. it like that. Uh, but yep. let me summarize it. Basically, uh, once the timer is, uh, goes all the way down, you're going to get an angle to aim at. You pull up to that angle. You're going to see the velocity vector between the two arrows pointing at each other. Press mm -hmm. and hold. Go upside down. Get your speed back. That's essentially what it is. Okay. I'll do my best. Uh, you can unpause, and as uh, it happens, I will explain what you need to do. Okay. For me, it's already showing A39. A40 for me. A40. Okay, so make sure after burn on. Pull, 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 keep pulling, keep pulling. Keep pulling. Till you get to that A40, it's gonna be quite a climb. Once you can, press and launch. There we go. Did you notice that? Uh, was between and go upside down get your speed back you can see that we slow down quite a bit yeah did you notice the uh velocity vector going between those arrows yeah i saw that now if you look at the harm it's gonna really go high it's at sixty thousand feet and still climbing at 1650 knots it's wow. going crazy fast and crazy high and that's what gives it uh, such a range. Right now we launched at roughly 40 miles out, uh, but we weren't even that high and that fast. Again, if we launched at 30, 35,000 feet and at Mach 1, that it could have been a, a 50 miles out or even more uh, shot. If, if, if I was going much faster before, like the actual pull up and stuff, yeah, because if got you more range. Yeah, because if you were faster before the pull up, you would also be faster during uh, during the pull up and uh, during the launch. So it it literally is calculating constantly, depending on your flight parameters. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Even wow. as even as you pull, it keeps cal like if as you pull, all of a sudden or not all of a sudden, it notices that the optimal angle is not forty, it's thirty eight. Then it's gonna tell you that it's gonna it updates it as you pull up. So that's why you don't want to like you want to keep looking between the two. So you look to the right, see the angle it tells you, and or you can just focus on the velocity vector. Now, if you go to the HSD, uh, while your missile wait, did your missile hit? Uh, slightly off. Yeah, slightly off. Okay. Um. Wait, but no, it got the radar. Yeah, it's I think on fire. It is. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Before we move on to the last one, uh, if you look at your HSD, do you have it up on your right display? Yes. If you look at it, you can see that the six has a, a orange line around it. That's the threat ring. That's kind of an estimated range. It's it's preset, so it doesn't matter. It, it's not about parameters. It's in the database of the F-16 that SA-6 has this much range or SA-2 has this much range and such. Right. So as you see, we launched like only now we're entering that threat zone, uh, threat ring, and, and we launched way outside of it. So in that like in that scenario, when you see the radar on the H uh, HDS, uh, when you see the radar on the HDS, uh, and you launch at it from way outside the threat ring, you're in no threat. Like you're way outside the range of the SAM, and you just launched at it a missile that will do all the job for you. So all you need, so you launch it, you can just turn around uh, and make sure you're safe or go for another SAM. Though with medium to long range SAMs, that's sometimes the case. Sometimes your range is going to outrange them while you're still able to see the radar. Mm -hmm. So when, when you, as soon as you launch a harm, like literally the second it's off the rail, you can turn away. That doesn't. Yeah, matter. it's a fire and forget. So it does all the job for you. You do well, I, I, sometimes want to. Oh, sorry, what? I know that some, mainly air to air weapons, I guess, but sometimes you need to keep your plane radar on the target for a little while until it goes pitbull, right? Uh, yeah, but that's for uh, air to air Fox three missiles. Uh, harms 
do everything for you. All right, uh, yep. now, if you look to the right, we have an S, which is a search radar. Or not right, it's between... Uh, it's on the 2 o'clock-ish, 1, 2 o'clock. Uh, I think so. If you look at your RWR, you should have a S at your 2 o'clock. Oh, one, yeah. 2 o'clock, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the HDS or the harm attack display, it it's also there. So we're not going to lock on the S because that's a search radar. Search radar only gives the track radar some earlier information or early uh, warning. As I told you earlier, the harm attack display and the HDS automatically tell the harm which sound to go for. But now, because we're telling it to go to a waypoint, it doesn't know anything about what's there so we need to tell it the way you do that is on the weapon page uh you want to press on the uh, table one so the tbl1 and it will switch to table two and then press again to table three got it and now you'll see on the left side different sams so you have an sa3 a search radar a, uh, sa6 u which actually i don't know why it's a u uh, and I hope it's a bug because it should be a 2 and it used to be a 2 there and finally oh. 13 so yep. uh, what we'll do is press on that U and you'll see it boxed yes and right now what's gonna happen is basically you told the harm on steer point 6 oh sorry steer point 5 there is a SA2 I want you to fly there and and hit it that, that's basically, wow. basically what we just did so, uh, as you're still in pre-brief mode, you can uh, aim towards the, uh, fly towards the waypoint and do the same exact thing. Uh, wait for the timer to go down, look at the angle it tells you to loft to, and pull up to that, uh, to those two arrows pointing at each other until your the velocity vector is between them. Press and hold, fire, that's job done. Then we can uh, follow your missile and make sure it's, it will finish the job for us. Okay. Go, loft it up, nice. Trying to. Oh, jeez. Yeah, keep pulling, keep pulling. The no, the F-16 can really pull its nose when it wants to. There we go, good shot. Go upside down and start getting your speed back. Going against SAMs can actually be quite, um, quite heavy on the fuel. Uh, because you, uh, for those harms, you want to be fast and high, which Flying high does save some fuel, but flying fast <laughs> wastes a lot of fuel. <laughs> Always. Uh, and also, if you have, if they shoot back at you, that's a lot of afterburner and diving and and turning and and pulling G's. Uh, so uh, you lose a lot of speed, but and you want to get it back by uh, again afterburning. Yeah, uh, going against Sam's can be quite intensive on the fuel. <clears throat> yeah. All right, is your missile still in the way? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, diving down. It's, it's still above the speed of sound. It's mm -hmm. it's coming at a crazy fast approach. It's approaching at a crazy fast speed, and it's quite of a steep dive down. And right on it. Boom. And there we go. That got the the track radar of the SA2. So this SA2 c can do nothing. Again, the search radar is still there, and I'm actually going to launch uh, on it for the fun of it. Okay. <laughs> uh... No, it got the two. Wait. Get the S. There we go, S. And Magnum. I forgot to mention the, the radio call for launching harms is Magnum. Oh, there goes yours. Yep. And you can see <coughs> that launching in EOM is like one of the coolest things. Because uh, <laughs> you can just watch your missile turn and loft up and fly away. It's crazy.